Hello, I'm Zach Helberger, and I wanted to share a little bit from the Bible, uh, in particular Deuteronomy chapter 12. There's uh, two uh, passages in that chapter that are, that are quite interesting. So I want to start with sharing my screen, and uh, go ahead and share that. Okay, um, so this is Deuteronomy chapter 12. And it start, starting with verse 1. These are the statutes and ordinances you must be careful to follow all the days you live in the land, the Lord, or yod heh vav -Heh, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess. And this is referring, obviously, to the promised land um, in Israel. Chap uh, Verse 2, destroy completely all the places where the nations you are dispossessing. So there's there's nations, there's other nations that are in the promised land that they are driving out uh, when they cross the Jordan River to go in. And bear in mind that um, as Moses led the Israelites up out of Egypt and into the promised land, so Jesus, uh, the Messiah, will one day possibly even us will lead um he will lead us again into the promised land and it will be a, a tremendous a tremendous revival um so going back to verse two then destroy completely all the places where the nations you are dispossessing have served their gods atop the high mountains on the hills and under every green tree and you think about okay, what what uh, what do we put under green trees you know, in, in late December? Tear down their altars, smash their sacred pillars, burn up their asherah poles, and cut down the idols of their gods, and wipe out their names from every place. You must not worship Yehovah, Yehovah your God, in this way. You shall not worship. You know, the Lord your God in this way. Um, instead, you must seek the place Jehovah your God will choose from among all your tribes to establish as a dwelling for his name. And there you must go. To that place you are to bring your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and heave offerings or wave offerings, uh, your vow offerings and free will offerings as well as the firstborn of your herds and flocks. There, in the presence of Jehovah your God, you and your household shall eat and rejoice in all you do, because Jehovah your God has blessed you. Um, and then, um, towards the end of the chapter here, there is, um, I'm going to start with verse, come on, there we go. I'm going to start with verse 28. So this is Deuteronomy 12, verse 28. And it says, Be careful to obey all these things I command you so that it may always go well with you and your children after you because you will be doing what is good and right in the eyes of Jehovah your God. So when we follow these things, we are doing what is good. We are doing what is right in the eyes of Yehovah our God. Then verse 29, when Yehovah your God cuts off before you the nations you are entering, cuts off before you the nations you are entering to dispossess. So there's going to be these nations inside um, the promised land and, and um, God's going to cut them off um, in front of these the uh, the people. So when Yehovah your God cuts off before you the nations you are entering to dispossess and you drive them out and live in their land, be careful not to be ensnared by their ways after they have been destroyed before you. Do not inquire about their gods asking, how do these nations serve their gods? I will do likewise. In verse 31, you must not Worship Jehovah your God in this way, because they practice for their gods every abomination which the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters 
in the fire as sacrifices to their gods. And then verse 32, see that you do everything I command you. Do not add to or subtract from it. So I want to do a, a just a, a quick word substitution in this, uh, see if this kind of, you know, because Jesus is God, and um, that's clearly uh, spelled out in numerous places, in, in especially like the, the Gospel of John, for example, uh, is, a, is a really good one uh, to look for evidence of that. So I'm going to substitute the word Jesus wherever you see yod heh vav -He, your God, or um, so... so um, when Jesus and and so and this again thinking of the second greater Exodus that is to come and um, I think it's Jeremiah sixteen, Jeremiah chapter sixteen is is a a a, a, a good example of this second greater Exodus that is to come that has not yet come um, and it says. No longer will it be said, as surely as yod heh -Vav -He lives, who brought us up out of Egypt into the promised land, but it, instead it will be said, as surely as Jehovah lives, who brought us from all the nations, um, from, you know, from, even from the farthest corner of the earth, from there, you, you know, this Deuteronomy, quoting Deuteronomy 30, is, even, if, even if you've been banished, scattered, driven out to the farthest corner, of of the earth from there you your Jehovah will gather you and from there he will bring you back to the promised land and um so like Moses was for um the Israelites way back then Jesus will be for all of us who hear his voice you know if you hear um like the good shepherd it, I think it's a John I think it's in the Gospel of John. I can't remember now, but you know the the passage about the good shepherd. If, if we will, if we hear his voice, we will follow after him. Okay. Um, so I'll read verse twenty nine then. So when Jesus, your God, cuts up before you the nations you are entering to dispossess, and you drive out, drive them out, and live in their land, live in the promised land, because that's where he's bringing us. Be careful not to be ensnared by their ways after they have been destroyed before you. Do not inquire about their gods, asking, how do these nations serve their gods? I will do likewise. And this is how you, this is how you, um, how you can be distinguished. How, how can someone distinguish like um, a Hindu from a, a Buddhist or a, or a Mormon from a, a Roman Catholic, it's by the set of instructions that they follow. So when we follow Jesus, who followed perfectly these, the set of instructions of his father, which are truly, truly, for sure, for sure, you can take it to the bank. Those instructions that God has given us are divine. And they're not, so they're, they're not of the world. Whereas everything else, you know, like um, the instructions of Islam, Islam, uh, instructions of Buddhism, or you know, any of the other things, these are instructions that are of the world. They are not divine. So, um, so going back to this, uh, so do not inquire about their gods, the, the things that are of the world, asking how do the how do these nations serve their gods? I will do likewise. And he says, you must not, you must not worship Jesus, your God, in this way, because they practice for their gods every abomination, which Jesus hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifices to their God. See that you do everything I command you. Do not add to or subtract from it. So um, this is something to, to think about carefully. Um, when because there's there's feast days there's special days in the year like passover um first fruit uh and um and these other things um and um you know it's got you know passover you've got shavuot you've got 
um, uh, Sukkot, yeah, Sukkot, and you know, Day of Atonement. I mean, you have you know these things that are found in the Bible. So these are divine instructions. They're instructions that are not of the world. And so these are the ones that we were to follow, not the instructions of man-made stuff, like you know, um, dipping eggs in in the blood of of um, of babies, uh, which is a, a ghastly practice. And that's serving some other god, you know, some god that's man-made, that's of the world. So so again, he says, see to it that you do everything I command you. Do not add to or subtract from it. And I, and I think I can confidently say is that if you add to or subtract from what God commands us, as, as found in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, then we have taken what is holy and made it become common. We've taken what is divine and made it into something that's man-made. Because when we say, oh, well, let's, let's do this instead, um, we're adding to or subtracting from his thing. And so we make it what is not of the world. We make it of the world. And um, so that's uh, something to consider, and I uh, hope this uh, may be a blessing, and take care.